praise the Lord. Oh, for His goodness and mercy. Amen. I mean, you appreciate the lane the Lord sent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the rain. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all that you do for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. And His mercy endures forever. Amen. And ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we're going to dismiss the children in a minute. But let me tell you something. The children's ministry is important a ministry. Just like the teen. Because Amy and others build a foundation in these children. And uh, the love that they receive is important. And uh, then uh, Stephen finishes up the job by imparting the word. Not that you're not important, you are. But without a foundation of faith, they, they, they won't receive the word. Many, many kids, we've had kids come through this uh, structure, and uh, I'll see them from time to time. Some of them are living for the Lord. Some of them go to other churches, that's fine, as long as they're in church. But you know, I see people that they were once in church, but they don't have a relationship with the Lord. It's about having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today is National Chi Alpha Day across the Assemblies of God. And we're certainly glad to have Jennifer. And she brought several with her. Some of her are her staff and some of her students. And uh, if you would, just introduce your staff. Well, we're certainly glad, as we said, uh, uh, today is National Chi Alpha Day across the Assemblies of God. And uh, our assistant superintendent uh, is, uh, was at Nickel State, and, and uh, he, uh, Brother Walt Rose, which was our assistant superintendent at the time, he, he brought him in his house, and he, he watched over him and kept him, and so... We're thankful for the blessings that Cal Alpha has been. And uh, Angel is going to take the youth out. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's give the youth a hand. Well, the rest of you are in here. You know, God is good, and His mercy endures forever. You know, God is so good to us. You know, that song they sang, The Air We Bring. You know, you, you ever realize that no other place that we have explored has an atmosphere like it, like the Earth? Nowhere. You know, uh, Mars and some of those planets that they've uh, had rovers, you know, they don't have an atmosphere. Well, they have an atmosphere, but it's hydrochloric acid and, you know, things we wouldn't breathe. But God has given us the breath of life. God has given us you know, and, and people breathe in and out all the time, and they never think about that God has provided everything. He's provided everything. You know, in the beginning, God brought, the, brought heaven to earth, and he had a paradise, and he, he created man. He created all the animals, but with man, he, he took time. He didn't just say it. He created man. And uh, he, he said... To the, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, let us create man in our image, in our likeness, and let him have dominion. Well, we're supposed to have dominion over all the fowls of the sea, over everything that moves on earth. And uh, God created man. You know, he didn't create him in mass. There, there's an idea that God just created man man and mass. No, he didn't. He took the time to engineer man and, and make him a, a special. You know, you are a three-part being. You have a spirit, which God made us like him to have a spirit. We have a soul, our intellect, our, our mind, and most, but we have a body. Now, when you die, the only thing you leave behind is your body. 
and uh, your spirit and soul go one or two places. You either go into the presence of the Lord, or you, you go into the holding chamber of hell uh, to await the final judgment. You know, God tells us in the Word, he, he tells the end from the beginning. You know, God worked in six days, and on the seventh day He rested. Well, that means that the 6,000 years that man has been on the earth, it is uh, the time period for man to receive the Lord. That, that uh, salvation is for today. And uh, on the seventh day, God rested. Well, you know, the Lord's coming back for the church. And whether we went by the way of the grave or we're alive, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, the dead in Christ will rise first. But we which are alive and remain, They'll be caught up, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's, that's a wonderful time. But you know, God intended that for the whole earth. God, God, God invites everybody to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as His personal Lord and Savior. And as uh, the, the world is in darkness, you know, the multitude of the world is going to miss heaven. They're going to miss heaven. People that you work with, they're, they're on their way to hell. That's not my message. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God was the original giver. And God gave His Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's available to everybody. Now there are places where that the, the Word is not preached. I had a brother that worked in Saudi Arabia and he could carry his Bible. But they didn't want you to proselyte. They didn't want you to, to carry the word to their people. Uh, Tommy was over there. He knows. And you, you could have a Bible. You could have all the Bible study you want. But don't affect our people. Because the word is truth. The word is life. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Christians in Iran, Iraq, that they're Christians. And uh, one of these days... You know, they, they have a nuclear plant. They're getting close to a nuclear weapon. How many of you know that Israel's not going to let them have a nuclear weapon? And so they're, they're going to probably bomb, uh, you know, and to have a nuclear plant, you have to have be near water. So they know where the nuclear plant is, and so they're going to bomb it. And when that happens, the Christians that are in that area are going to be scattered and to all the world, and they're going to tell people about Jesus. You know, God is a good God. I mean, He is not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. You know, uh, in, uh, when God brought the people into the land of, of uh, Canaan, there were groups that He said, leave them alone. They didn't, they didn't just destroy everybody. Uh, they said, well, don't leave them alone because they're cup of iniquity is not full. God was giving them time to repent. To repent. God is merciful. Uh, you know, there they were uh, people that they, they wouldn't repent regardless. But God said, let them alone. And the Israelites were reminded them when they attacked them, said, we left you alone when we came into the land to give you, give you time to repent. But you didn't repent. So we're going to take your land. Well, the Bible says, well, how come God gave uh, Abraham that land? Well, the earth is the Lord. The Bible says the earth belongs to the Lord. Everything you see belongs to God. He created it all. So, uh, you know, God said, you can have this land. And uh, we've been to Israel. And uh, that the, uh, the little land strip they have is not the, the land that God gave to, to uh, Abraham. Abraham owns part of Egypt and over in the desert. He owns all that land. It all belongs to him. God said, get up on that mountain, and as far as you can see in any direction, I'll give you that land. Right. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I, I believe he can see afar, far off. Amen. Amen. And God said, that's yours. You know, he just sojourned. He didn't own a... God had promised him that, but he didn't own a bit of that land. But he just showed Dern with his wife and his flocks. 
And he had, he had gold and silver. I mean, he was wealthy. God made him wealthy. You know, God will make you wealthy. Amen, if you believe the Lord. Well, let me get into my word. Calling things that be not as though they were. Calling things that be not as though they were. And, and uh, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. This is Jesus speaking. Therefore I say unto you, this is Jesus, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now that's Jesus speaking. In Romans 4, 17, it says, As is written, I have made thee the father of many nations in the presence of God, whom he believed, Abraham believed God, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth things that be not as though they were. Somebody said, well, that's God. God can call things that be not as though they were. But the Bible says that we're to be imitators of God. We're to imitate God. In the King James, it be therefore followers of God. But in the New King James verses, be imitators of God. You know, when you were little, you know, your boy or girl, did you put on mama's high heels and walk around and say, one of these days, I'm going to be big like mama, or put on your dad's shoes and you walked, walked around? Yeah, some of you remember that. And, uh, you know, you were, you were looking to be old. Yeah, and now you're old and you wish you'd be young. <laughs> well, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your word. It is a lamp under our feet, a light under our path. We thank you, Lord God, that you illuminate our pathway. The Lord, that every that you go before us to make the crooked way straight. Lord, that you're the glory and the lifter of our head. We thank you that your word would find its place in our heart. Lord, that we will believe the word. We'll trust the word and trust you in Jesus' precious name. You know, God changed the name of, of Abram to Abraham. Now, Abram meant exalted father. In Hebrew, it meant exalted father. Well, Abraham wasn't the father of anybody. He didn't have a kid. He didn't have any children, but they called him exalted father. And then God changed his name to Abraham, which meant the father of a multitude. He didn't have any kids. How is God going to change his name and make him the father of a multitude? You know, can you imagine being the, 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 the servant of, of Abraham and say, the father of a multitude, can I take the sheep out? And, you know, they thought, well, that's the dumbest thing that I, I've ever said. But God had a covenant with him. And because of the covenant, that you, see, you see the potential that God had to be the exalted father, to the, be the father of the nation of Israel, and to be the father of multitude. And, uh, you know, Abraham and Sarah, they messed it up. But you have to remember, that Abraham didn't have this book. He didn't have, he didn't have Christian television. He didn't have anybody to, to, to help him and, uh, you know, we have this book. It's a glorious book. And in it, you will find, in the Old Testament, you find types and shadows of, of Jesus. But in the New Testament, we find the real thing, Jesus. And then Jesus created the church. He sent the Holy Spirit to create the church. And he gave instruction to the most unlikely people. You know, I think that Peter must have had peppermint shoes because he was always sticking his foot in his mouth. And, uh, you know, he, he, he let uh, Peter write a couple of books. And, uh, you know, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Now, Paul was not a believer in the Lord. He was on the road to Damascus with, with uh, uh, letters to, to send to prison. Can you imagine little kids, their mom and dad's taken away from them, and they're, they're crying. But it didn't bother Paul because they were unbelievers. They didn't believe in, in the God. They, they had exalted Jesus. And so they were, they were, as far as they were concerned, they were criminals. But God, but God had an experience. Jesus 
said, why are you persecuting me on the Damascus road? I've been to Damascus, and uh, uh, that, that road was well, somewhere. Paul met Jesus. And uh, God had Ananias. You know, you, you ever have God tell you to do something? And you say, well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, that's where Ananias was. He said, I want you to go pray for Saul. He said, uh, that, that, that must have been the pizza I had last night. You know, that couldn't be God. You know, and, and he explained to him, you know, he's a persecutor. He, he's those people. In, surely that's not God. I want me to go over and pray for him. But, but God encouraged him. And, and finally, he, he went. And uh, God changed the life of Paul. Now, Paul didn't immediately begin to write the New Testament. He spent 40, 14 years in Saudi Arabia being taught by the Lord. 14 years. That's a, you know, some of us, that's a lifetime. But after 14 years, he went up to Jerusalem to verify what the Lord had said. You know, the Bible says in two or three witnesses, let everything be. Con-. So, so he is confirming and, uh, you know, he, he wasn't there for communion. We had that lesson. He wasn't there. So he asked Peter and John, is this, yeah, that's right, that's right. That's what the Lord did. And, and so he confirmed everything. You know, the Bible says, let everything be concerned by two or three witnesses. There, there's enough witness in this book to confirm everything that God has said. This is a letter for you. See, the Bible is God speaking to you. And, uh, uh, you know, the world, by and large, they're, they're ignorant of the Word. Over in, in Saudi Arabia, they, they, they'll let you bring this Bible in, but they don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they let you have a Bible, but it's yours. And uh, you, you, have to, uh, you have to keep it. And, uh, uh, you know, you keep it in your logic. A number of years ago, they made a movie about uh, uh, somebody coming in and killing all the Americans, so they moved out. My, my brother was working in Saudi Arabia, and so he came back to America because they made a movie. And so they got to think about it. Well, you know, we never thought about that, somebody come in and kill all the Americans. Well, the, uh, the word says that, that the promises of God in 1 Peter 1, verses 3, well, 1 through 3, says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, according as His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. See, God has given you everything that you will ever need in this life. And uh, to be like Him. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us into glory and virtue, whereby are exceeding, uh, are, are given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the sinless world through God. Now, a promise is a decoration that somebody makes. It is a, it is. I will do that. I, I will do that. Uh, or it is a, a, a decoration of what will happen if you do certain things. You know, Romans 10, 17, they that call upon the Lord shall be saved. That's simple. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, who so believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, does that mean that everybody on planet Earth is going to be saved? No. All of those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You, it is important to be a believer. You know, that's in our name, Believer's Worship Center. Well, you know, how many of you know you can sit in church every, day, every Sunday and you can hear the message and not believe a word? He that cometh to God must believe that God is. You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe there is a God. They just said, well, you know, when you die, you die. And so, 
have fun while you're here. Well, if you do, you're not going to end up in a very good place. Well, here's a promise. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who is on self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness. That's, that's the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord has saved us. But it doesn't stop there. You know, it would be wonderful if it stopped there. But it goes on to say that with his stripes you are healed. That's a promise. God has made a promise uh, to heal us. When he called the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And the Bible says there wasn't one feeble one among them. And that that wasn't all the Jews that came out. There were some Gentiles that followed them. They said, we believe in your God. And uh, maybe they believed because of the the, uh, the troubles that they had had, frogs and all that. So they believed God, your God is God. And so we're going to follow you. But... It doesn't matter what they had. If they had cancer or they had any kind of disease, it was instantly healed because I am the Lord that healeth thee. You know, Brother Mark was talking about tithes. Somebody said, well, tithes is under the law. No, tithes is not under the law. Abraham, who was not under the law, gave gave tithes to Melchizedek. And uh, he said, a tenth of all. He gave a tenth of the gold, he gave a tenth of the horses, the camel. He, he gave a tenth to the Lord. Why? Because he had, he had uh, redeemed all that. He, he redeemed, and so he gave tithe unto Melchizedek, who's a type of Christ. Now that's about 645 years before the law. So tithing is not on the law. If somebody told you that, they're mistaken. Because Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. You know, the the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. Amen means so be it. Every promise that God has made is, is backed up by the power of God. You know, we have seen the power of God. You know, God saves people. We, we have had people from, I'm going to get in trouble on why, from, uh, from uh, the uh, uh, think of it in a minute. The, uh, I'm going to say Kai Alpha, but uh, teen, challenge. teen Challenge. We've had the men and the women come. And uh, you wouldn't know, want to know their background because uh, some of them, uh, you know, men and women, sold their bodies to support the habit. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so God saved them. Their past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything they did in the past is, is nullified. God put it under the blood. He doesn't remember it again. Now, you might find somebody, oh, no, you, 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 you were a prostitute or you, you took drugs with me. They could remember that. But that's not who I am. You know, how many of you had the devil remind you of things that you did that were wrong? The, the devil is, is, a, he is, is a tormentor, and he comes to torment you. You know what you say to the devil? Well, that's what I used to be. That's a picture of who I used to be. But I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a new creation being with a life in the nature of God on the inside But you see, we have to appropriate the promise. See, to appropriate means that you take something and make for your own use or you make it your own. You make that your own. And it is that the the promises of God, how do we appropriate salvation? Well, we do it by faith. Hebrews 11 and 1, it's not how you get faith. But it tells us what faith does. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means that there's no direct evidence that there's any change in your life. But how many of you remember when you got saved? Amen. Amen. You probably could take me to the, to, to the time and to the place. But you remember when Jesus came into your life. 
And, and it doesn't matter to anybody else, but because you received the Lord Jesus Christ, you knew the time, you knew the place, you knew. Well, it, it, how many have been healed by the power of God? Well, it, you know, God is the healer of every sickness and every disease. And, uh, but we have to appropriate. We have to bring that into our life. And, uh, you know, believe means to accept something as true. You know, God says, I'm the Lord that heals thee. With his stripes we were healed. But we have to believe that that's true. That God is not a respecter of person. The Bible says that, but God's not a respecter of person. It doesn't matter who you are or, 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 or what you are, that we can receive our healing. We can receive our salvation and our healing. But, you know, people can receive salvation and, uh, and not receive their healing. How many of you know that? Yeah, there was a lady that she was an Assembly of God minister, and uh, she said, you know, the Lord has trusted me with cancer. Well, she'll die and go to heaven and find out she didn't have to have that cancer. But, you know, because th with his stripes you were healed. That, but you have to believe that to be true according to your word. So how do we get faith? Well, if God demands that we have faith, how do we get it? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not just hearing anything, but hearing the word of God. You have to hear the words of God. You, you have to stick your nose in his book and believe that what you read is truth. God has provided the means for you to have faith. But notice it doesn't say having heard. Oh, I've heard that before. That, that's a famous saying. A lot of people say, well, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Faith does not come by having heard. It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Because it has to get from your head to your heart. The Bible says, For with well, the heart man believeth unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made un, uh, uh, un, unto salvation. You, you have to connect those two. But it has to be in your heart. It, it has to be in your, pass from your head to your heart. Then you believe God, you believe the Word of God, and you, you realize I can be saved. Uh, the Bible says, For the heart man believeth. To believe means that we accept something as true. We exercise. How do we exercise our faith? How do we exercise it? How, how do we release our faith? We have faith. We've heard the word of God, but how do we release that? Well, Romans 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We have the same spirit of faith as it is written. I have believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. See, we accept the word of God as true. And we believe the word. And, uh, you know, when healing comes, it manifests in our life. But, but, you know, it's an important thing to have the healing. But Jesus said, what thing, there, what thing soever you desire? When you pray, believe it, you receive it, and you shall have them. Well, what are we supposed to do in the meantime? Well, it, it's, it's a good thing that we, we exercise our faith by speaking the words of God. Over and over and over and over and over again. The manifestation comes because we confess the word of God. Now, Jesus was a, a, a man of faith. Everything he did was a, 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 for a pattern and example for us. He did everything. You know, he was in the boat one time, and, and the... the the, they, they were sailors. They knew how to handle a storm. But a storm came up. It was a supernatural storm. And the wind blew and the waves beat. And they had to wake Jesus up. He must have been really tired. You know, he had ministered all day. And, uh, and he was in the hinder part of the ship. And he was asleep. And the wind didn't wake him, and the waves didn't wake him, and the boat was filling up with water. And uh, they finally woke Jesus up. Jesus, don't you, don't you realize we're going to perish? We're going to die. Now, Jesus said we're going to the other side, but they, they discounted that. 
See, you have to believe in your heart. And so Jesus walked to the front of the boat. He said, winds and waves, be still. That's all he said. Winds and waves, be still. And immediately there was a calm. The wind quit blowing, and, and the waves quit filling the boat up. Then they were afraid of Jesus. They were afraid of the storm. They were going to die. Now they're afraid of Jesus. It says, what manner of men is this, that even the winds and the waves obey him? You know, the winds and the waves will obey you. A number of years ago, uh, there was a, 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 a plane crash that happened on the tarmac. And uh, two planes, it was foggy, and they ran together. And this guy was a Christian sitting on a 747. And out of his spirit came, I'm standing on the Word of God. He said the next thing he was knew, he was standing in the aisle. And there's a big fireball coming at him. And he said, I'm standing on the Word of God. And he looked behind him, that fireball had passed. He looked up and he saw a hole. And, uh, you know, I've been on a 747. It's a pretty good jump up to, to reach, you know. And so... He said, I'm standing on the Word of God. Next thing he knows, his head is poking out of that hole. God was honoring his Word. He, he, he pulled himself out. He scrambled across the wing. And, uh, you know, uh, the wings are like a B-52. They're pretty high. You're going to break a bone. But he said, I'm standing on the Word of God. And uh, he didn't have to break anything. And uh, the next day, they, they, on his pillow, there was all kind of metal, aluminum, that, that was in the plane. I don't know who else survived that, but that man survived because he was standing on the Word of God. It came out of his innermost part of his being. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, uh, God has made a promise. God has promised to us. The Bible says great and precious promises. It, it, God will change your life if you believe Him. If you'll take this Word and believe God and, and put this Word in your mouth, your life will change. The first change needs to be salvation. You need to be saved. The, everybody needs to be saved. The whole world needs to be saved. But the world's not going to be saved. You know, Noah got on the boat and there was eight souls, counting himself. And he got on that boat with all those animals, and God left the door open for seven days. God's merciful. Anybody could have got on that ship. But you know what they said? Well, it ain't never rain. It ain't going to rain. Noah is a nut. You know, he got on that boat with all those animals. He's a nut. I ain't getting on that boat. And uh, after seven days, God shut the door, and no man could open it. And it started to rain. You know, they say, ooh, that must have been the rain. And I, when it got high enough, about ankle deep, knee deep, ooh, that rain needs to stop. And, and the Bible says God, he, he broke up the fountains of the deep. You know, Jacques Cousteau, who is, I, I, as far as I know, is not a Christian, he said if the, if the, the oceans, if it was level ground, that that the water would encircle the earth been 10,000 foot deep. That's pretty deep. 10,000 deep. Somebody says, well, where, where'd all the water that uh, a flood of Noah? God made a, made a way for it to, to drain in the ocean. You know, the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea. Some places the Red Sea is 2,000 foot deep. That's pretty deep. But they crossed, and where they crossed, the, 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 the sand had filled that in, and, and there was a natural, 45 degree, natural place for them to cross. God had them in the right place at the right time. You know, it may look bleak. You know, you may have marital problems. You may have financial problems. You may have physical problems. But if you'll get a hold of the Word of God, God will deliver. He's faithful to His promise. He's faithful to every promise He's made. 
And if we'll take hold of the Word of God, God will fulfill His promises. You know, the Word says uh, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, and we say it all the time, that if thou confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, you will be saved. Somebody said, uh, well, that's awful simple. Well, God didn't make it hard. You know, uh, when the, when the uh, Naaman went to be healed of his leprosy, God had a person, a little maid. And she said, there's a man of God. If you go see him, God will heal you. And, and so, so he went. And, uh, you know, the guy sent his servant out. And he said, he was thinking, do you know who I am? I, I, I'm the great cocker. And uh, he, that guy won't even come out. And so he said, well, uh, the Jordan's nasty, and I'm not dipping in that thing. I'm going home. I'll dip, you know, in, the, in, the, in rivers we got at home. But his servant said, you know, if he'd asked you something mighty, you would have done it in a minute. But he said, Go, it won't hurt you to dip in the, in the water. He had to talk in to follow, follow the instructions of God. But you, and not just dip once, seven times. There's something about the number seven. And, and, and on the seventh day, you know, he came up and he said, well, six times, that's it. I still have leprosy. But in the seventh time, when he came up out of the water, he was clean. God always delivered. You know that uh, when Abraham and Lot, they separated, and, and, uh, and, and Lot went down, he ended up outside the city, and finally he's in the city, and he's on the city council. You know, sin will take you further than you want to go and cost you more than you, what you want to pay. And, 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 and uh, Abraham, he... he, he uh, Debated with God. And he said, uh, if you can find 50 righteous, there ain't 50 righteous. He got down to 10. If you found 10 righteous, spare the city. God couldn't find 10. In the whole of the city, there were 10 people that were righteous. But God saved Lot and his family. And it took a lot. God sent the angels. And, uh, you know, the angels had to smite those that were outside. They're coming in. We want those guys. He said, well, I'll give you my daughters. They, they haven't known him. I, what a father he was. He's going to send his daughter out. But the angels of the Lord caused blindness to fall upon him. And uh, so they tried to find the door all night long. And, and, and the angels of the Lord let him out. And, uh, you know, Lot said, go to the Go up to the mountaintops. He said, well, we'll never make it in time. He said, can we go to the city? Yeah, you can go to that city. And so they, they, God has promised to protect you and keep you and enrich you. And so as long as Lot follows the instructions of the Lord, they were good. But you know, Lot's wife had to take one more look at the city for whatever reason. And the Bible says she became a pillow of salt. Because she looked back. God said, don't look back. You're, you're leaving here, don't look back. You know, when we leave this world, the world is going to change. There are people who are going to be saved. But you know, it's so easy now to just confess the Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead. But then, you know, somebody might have to have the head cut off. And you know, there are not many people that are willing to give their life for the Lord. And uh, it was that, that God spared Lot. Not because of Abraham. You know, God has spared the world because of Jesus. You know, whosoever shall call upon the name. Whosoever. That means anybody can call upon the name of the Lord. All over the world, people that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ can be saved. God's not... So, well, you know, you don't qualify. God has made it that everybody qualifies to receive Jesus. God so loved the world, He gave His only God. God's the original giver. 
Brother, brother uh, Mark brought it out. We give our tithe. We're just giving back to the Lord what belongs to Him. You, you know, the tithe belongs to the Lord. The Bible says that. And God will enrich you. He will bless you. He'll give you ideas, thoughts, and opinions. He will, he will call what you do to prosper. There was a, a, a pastor, I want to say who it was, and he said, uh, you know, I read in there where God would bless your storehouse. He said, Lord, I don't have a storehouse for you to bless. And, and so he invested in, uh, in the stock market. He invested in uh, non-taxable municipal bonds which is a safe investment. They, they pay. Well, he said, and uh, the, his agent reinvested that. Now, he was doing all right. God always supplied his need. But he read, God don't have a storehouse. He said it wasn't very long until he had $500,000. And in, in, in God had blessed his storehouse. You know, if you create a storehouse, God will bless it. Because he said he will bless your storehouse. He didn't put that in there just to fill up words on the page. God put it in there because of His blessing. God wants to bless you. He made Abraham rich. When Abraham came out of Ur of the Chaldees, he didn't have a lot. But God made him rich in, in cattle and in, in you know sheep, goats, uh, cows, camels. You know, if you're, you're over there in Saudi Arabia, you have a camel, you're a rich person. It costs a lot to have a camel. And so he had camels, but he also had gold and silver. He had, he had a, a portfolio that, that was inexhaustible. If gold went down, he had silver. Uh, if cattle, sheep went down, he had camels. So God made him rich. And uh, God gave him a son. You know, the Bible says that Sarah believed God. And uh, it was past the time. She was 90 years old. I heard about a lady. She was 60 some odd years old and had a baby. That's pretty old. But she went through the process and she had a baby. At six, I think she was 62. And uh, they said, beyond that, you're not having a child. And they gave her all medicines and stuff. But Sarah was 90 years old when she became pregnant. Now, Sister Carper's 102. And uh, so, and Joe, he's not here. Joe's 93. Well, Abraham was 99 when he, when he found out he was going to be a father. God promised him a a son when he was 75. And uh, he, he changed his name. Well, because he had to agree with God. He heard Father of a Multitude, and he changed his wife's name to Sarai, the mother of a multitude. Well, they didn't have any kids. But God is going to bless them because he's the glory and the lifter of her head. And God calls them to have a child when it was impossible. God is a God of impossibility. If, if people say it can't be done, well, there's one that can. God is able. And if you'll take the word of God, you take the promises of God and begin to confess those with your mouth, the word of God will, will cause the reality of the word to come to pass in your life. But it's easier for us to take a pill or something else than to put the Word of God in our mouth. Now, I'm not against doctors. You know, doctors do good, but you know, doctors are limited. You know, there's been a lot of people that well, we've done everything we can do. Well, thank God that there's the God that, of the universe that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we might think or ask because His power works with us. The Holy Spirit is working with us. On the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, God sends the Holy Spirit to charge, start the church. And uh, it's been going over ever since. 
Peter said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days I will part. Well, the last days began when God started the church. We're living in the last of the last days. And it is the very last days. We're, we're living in an unprecedented time. We see things happening today that we thought we would never see. We're living in the last days. And it's coming upon us to share the gospel with people far and wide that we we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, they're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ on the, on the campus of, of Louisiana Tech. There, there is, there's a campus crusade uh, in Nichols State. There's a cramp, campus crusade on Northwest. Camp. Well, that's reaching the students. And they can, they can reach out. But you know, they're kind of like uh, the people that were in Noah's day. They said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to that cow for me. You know, uh, there's nobody over there. But the Word of God is being preached. The Word of God is being preached here. It's being preached in a lot of places. You know, we live in a, we live in a time when people don't hear the Word of God. Attendance is down worldwide. You know, God sends us a revival. Well, we have to confess that God wants us to have a revival, and we have to confess revival and expect that God is going to send a revival. He is faithful to His Word. He will do what He says He will do. The Word says, Have I not said it? Well, I did it. God said it. If He said it, I'll take advantage of it. Yeah, it's, it's the Word of God. Stand to your feet. We're going to confess the Word of God before we go. You know, every week we uh, do Romans 10, 9, and 10. But, but before we do, if you have a need, we would like to pray for you. If you're sick in body, we pray for you. And, uh, you know, the Word of God will heal you. The Word of God will heal you. I'm living proof. The Word of God will heal you. But you have to keep it in your, in your heart and in your mouth. Every day, every day, every day. And, and, and the Word will heal you. Let's say this. Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe from my heart. I confess with my mouth. I believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God. I believe that he died for me. I believe he took my sins and nailed them to the cross. He took my sicknesses. And when he was beaten with a, with a whip, I was healed. Every sickness and every disease that is under the law, I've been healed. Every sickness. And every disease. I thank you, Lord, that you prosper me. I thank you, Lord, I have a job. I thank you, Lord, that you have provided for me a storehouse. I thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.